In this first section, we need to gain an understanding of something called the antiderivative. So I'll just state it this way. If this, um, if this here were a function, and I told you that this is the derivative of some other function, um, and asked you to find that function, then um, how would you go about doing that? Um, you could uh, you know, take a bunch of random uh, functions just out of nowhere, take the derivative, and see if that's what you got. But of course, we know something about taking derivatives, and um, if we think about it a little bit, we can uh, make some pretty good guesses as to what function uh, would have this as a derivative. Uh, so, you know, hopefully you've been thinking about that a little bit, what function would have this as a derivative. Um, to talk about that function, we would write a big F of x. So if this is the derivative, this would be the original function that this is the derivative of. It's just a notational thing. Um, for one thing, we know this is x to the first. And when we take derivatives, we subtract one from exponents. So we must have started with an x squared, right? We, we would uh, take the derivative at some point. We would subtract one from this exponent. And there we would be. We would uh, be at x to the first. And so we could just check and see, is this good enough? Uh, is the derivative of this function this function? We would take 2 and multiply it by uh, the coefficient that we see here. That would be just 2 times 1. That's 2 times x to the first. Yes, this function is what we call the antiderivative of that function, because this is the derivative of that. All right, so let's say since f prime of big X, f big F prime of x, um, is equal to f of x, then f, big F of x, is an antiderivative. Notice I said an antiderivative, uh, implying that there is more than one antiderivative. Um, just as an example, let me say uh, if we did x squared plus 2, would that have the same derivative? Yeah, well, 2x plus the derivative of 2 is 0. So, yeah. Um, what if we did plus 5? Yeah. Plus 1,000. Of course, all of those have the same derivative, 2x. So, x squared plus anything, or what we put is a capital C, which of course stands for constant, um, plus any constant has the same derivative. Um, so, let's try another function g of x is equal to, um, let's say, 3. Let's not say 3. Let's just say x squared. Okay. Well, um, then we would go capital G of x. The antiderivative would be a function that has x squared as its derivative. So taking our cue from this line of thinking, we know that we're going to subtract one from the exponent of this function to get this exponent, so we'll start with x to the third. Um, and then we say, um, well, does this have this as a derivative? Now, this is the derivative of this is 3x squared. But it is x squared, and it wouldn't be too hard to um, fix this so that when we do come down and multiply this 3 by this coefficient, we wind up with 1, which is what we want. So if we put a 1 third there, then 3 times 1 third is 1, and you subtract 1 from 3, you get 2, so x squared. Uh, of course, now we are starting to understand we want to put that plus c afterward. Okay, so that seems to be pretty straightforward. Um, what about, let's see. If, say, h of x were equal to the third root of x, and I wanted to know what the antiderivative, or what the family of antiderivatives looks like, by the way. Just any function that is x squared plus c is in the family of antiderivatives. Any uh, antiderivatives of this function. Any function that looks like this is in the family of antiderivatives of x squared, uh, and so on. So let's define the family of antiderivatives of this guy. Uh, it's been pretty simple uh, so far if we could write x to some power 
Uh, so if we change this to be x to some power, which we can by writing to the one third, now we have something we can deal with. Um, we know we're going to add one to the to this guy to get the antiderivative, right? We see the reverse pattern, the same that we subtract one from the power to get the derivative. We're going to add one to get the power of the antiderivative. So we know this will be x to the, what do you get when you add one to that? You get four thirds, right? And the thing is, though, we want to wind up with a one here. So same reasoning as uh, this example, g of x. Uh, we would like when we bring down the four thirds and multiply out in front for it to cancel out and become a one. So this would have to be three fourths, OK? Um, one last example before I just go to the sample problems video. Um, maybe if I said r of x is equal to 1 over x squared. That'll be interesting. Um, we're looking for big r of x. And I'm looking back at the previous problem, realizing we should have said plus c. Okay. Well, it's going to be helpful to write this as, a, as an exponent. OK. And we might feel like we're cruising along. We say, OK, this is x to the negative 3. But remember, we're going to subtract 1 from this. So if you subtract 1 from negative 3, you get negative 4. All right, just maybe you would make that mistake. Maybe not. Um, we're going to want this to be a negative 1. So when you subtract 1 from it, we get negative 2. So now we're to a place where we can just kind of fix this so that it comes out to be positive x to the negative 2. If we do it right now, it'll be negative 1 times x to the negative 2. So we'll just put a negative right there. So if we take the derivative of this, we'll get negative times negative. It's positive 1. Subtract 1 from the power, you get negative 2. And so then we'll, we're ready to just throw that plus c on there and say that any function that looks like this uh, is the antiderivative, or is an antiderivative of this function here. OK? I um, guess one more thing for our sample problems video. Um, uh, just for simplicity's sake, it's, this is just a notation thing. Um, if, if I have a function like 2x, and I want to tell you to find the family of antiderivatives, uh, this is how I do it. Okay, uh, I write this elongated s called the integral symbol. Right, that's pretty much what it looks like. Um, and then to let you know that I took the derivative, so follow along with me. There's some function. I took the derivative of it and got 2x. Just so we're clear, uh, I'll tell you that I, by writing this dx here, uh, that I took the derivative with respect to x. So that is essentially what that means. So this, uh, whether I say find an antiderivative of 2x with respect to x, or I say find the indefinite integral of 2x with respect to x, that's what it means. So the indefinite integral of 2x dx is x squared plus c. Uh, so just a notational thing. So if you see this little guy right here and a function and then dx multiplied by it, then it means find the antiderivative of this thing here. All right. So uh, thanks for watching that. Uh, quick little intro. Uh, I'll do some sample problems after this. Hope that was helpful.